German short rows are another method of working a row short, but I like them because they look good front and back side. So if you have something like a shawl collar that you can see both sides, it's quite a nice method. I'm gonna do uh, German short rows on both sides for continental, both sides for throwing, and then I'll have a special bonus video for doing it backwards. So here I am, I've worked to four stitches before the end of the row, and my pattern tells me turn. So if it's written for uh, German short rows, it's gonna say turn and then DS. DS is short for double stitch. Now, the three things you wanna remember is you want to remember it's front slip lift. So the first thing is the yarn has to be in the front. So here, if I'm knitting and I go to the point where it says turn and I turn my work, boom, my yarn's already in the front. So that part is done. Front slip, I slip the yarn from one needle to the other. And the final step is lift. I'm going to lift up on that yarn and now you see where that word comes from, double stitch. You get this look that looks like two stitches. So I'm going to do that whole thing again and then we'll take a look at how to work it. So first time for continental, I've worked until there's four stitches left. My pattern either tells me to wrap and turn or if it's written for German short rows, it says turn and then DS. So step one, yarn in front, check. Step two, slip, check. Step three, lift up on that yarn. So it's front, slip, lift. And you can see that I've lifted up the two legs of the row below and it looks like a doubled stitch. Now, since I'm purling, I would have to move that yarn back between the tips of the two needles and purl. So now I'm gonna purl my way across until I have four stitches from the end. And we'll take a look at what that turn looks like if you're purling. Then we'll do it one more time for throwing. And then I'll have a little bonus lesson at the end for those of you that knit and purl back backwards. I do find this is a really nice invisible method on the right side and the wrong side. So perfect for a shawl collar like I have in Costa Maya. So here I'm gonna work until one, two, three, four stitches from the end. And if my pattern says WNT, I think turn and warp. But if it's written for German short rows, it's going to tell me turn. And then it's going to have an abbreviation DS, which stands for double stitch. Now remember, step one is front. So here I'm knitting, I have to move the yarn to the front first front, slip, lift. So I'm gonna lift up on that yarn and don't worry if it looks weird, if it looks a little twisted. Um, it looked quite even on the purl, but that's because the yarn was coming right from the middle, but now it's coming from the side. So when I lift up, it does look odd. Don't worry about it, that's correct. There's that doubled stitch and I would continue. Now, if a pattern was written for German short rows, like Costa Mayo is, it would tell me to work a set number of stitches before the last doubled stitch. So if I'm gonna work four stitches to four stitches before the last doubled stitch, I have five more stitches left. One, two, three, four, five. But what I wanna show you is if you're converting from a short row uh, a wrap and turn short row. So there's that gap and there's my doubled stitch. But remember, if this was a wrap and turn, the fourth stitch would actually be wrapped. So if a pattern wanted you uh, to be in the same spot, it might say work to one, two, three, four, five stitches before the last wrap. So that's the difference between wrap and turn. This is gonna have a wrap on it, doubled stitch, 
one stitch in front is going to be doubled. So that's just a little warning there. So now if I've worked to four stitches before the last doubled stitch, let's change this over to throwing, and it says turn. So now I turn, and remember, step one, front, step two, slip, step three, lift. So I lift up, and there's the doubled legs of the stitches, but of course I'm purling, so that yarn has to come back around to the front, and I'm now going to purl until four stitches before the last double. Two, four, so I have to purl four more times. One, two, three, four, and turn. So I turn around, but remember, step one, move yarn to front. Step two, slip. Step three, lift. So remember, think of that wrap and turn as turn and warp. So now I've completed my short rows, and in a pattern that's written for German short rows, it's just gonna be telling you to work that doubled stitch like it's one stitch. So you're gonna work it with the doubled stitch. So it might simply say something like, work both legs of doubled stitch together as one stitch. And that's all there is to it. No special instructions for closing the wraps. So here we go. Let's take a look at that. For We'll do ones for throwing, since I happen to be throwing. Ones for picking. And then I'm going to have a bonus at the end for doing all of this backwards, for those of you who knit and purl back backwards. So there's that doubled stitch. And I'm going to insert my needle into both the stitch and that lifted leg. So there it is, no big deal, knit it together. I'll take a look at that one more time for picking, share the love, always share the love, and then we'll go back and look at the purl. So there's one, two, three, four, so there it is. And let's just look at it closely. You can see, as I knock into the camera with my head, you can see that stitch and there the, the little doubled leg. So just make sure you're entering the stitch. Now you can tell you're in the right place because needle's touching needle. So for instance, if I go in the wrong place, I go into the row below, needle is not touching needle. Do you see that there's all sorts of, there's stuff between it. There's yarn between it. So if I've gone into the right space, there's nothing between it, needle touching needle. So enter the stitch, enter the doubled leg, knit them together. And now let's turn around and take a look at hiding the wrap in purl. And then we'll look at what all of this looks like. So I'll do the first one for continental, and then I'll do for throwing. Always important to do all my demos for both knitting styles because sometimes it's hard to recognize if you're a thrower, a demo in Continental, and vices, vices versus, vices versus. All right, so as I come to my first doubled stitch, we're going to look at the first one for Continental, and it's going to be the same thing. We need to purl the stitch and the doubled stitch together. So there it is, there's that guy, clear as day. They're really hard to miss, unlike wrap and turn where it's possible to buzz past it. And I'm gonna enter that doubled stitch. And again, I know I'm in the right place if there's nothing between me and my needle. See if I go into the row below, ah, there's yarn between those two needles. So I just, you can touch your actual needle Touch your left needle with your right needle, slide it across, and really make sure you're just entering that stitch. And I work them together. And now let's take a look at that same thing for throwing. So I have to look through the camera, which is always so much fun. Okay, here it is for throwing. And there's that doubled stitch. So let me work those two together work to the end of the row, 
let's take a look at what this all looks like. Looks quite a bit better after I had, um, if I've completed one more row, but this will give you a sense. So let me turn it around. And you can see the idea is we've worked the rows in the center with the stitches in the center for more rows. So hence that, hence that shape. And they look quite nice on the public side. And unlike wrap and turns, take a look at the private side, you don't have big loops. So with a shawl collar that turns, they look quite nice. This is a little bonus lesson for doing the German short rows if you happen to already know how to knit and purl back backwards. If you wanted to learn how to do that, make sure to check out my Craftsy class, Improve Your Knitting, Alternative Methods and Styles. So first I'll do it for Continental. And here I've worked until there's four stitches left. And think of it this way. If normally you would turn your work and your yarn is of course already in the front and then you slip and lift, if my yarn has to be in the front, when I'm moving backwards, my yarn has to be in the back. So I slip one stitch with my yarn exactly where it was, and then I have to lift to get that doubled stitch, there it is, and move that yarn back between the two needle tips. So let's look at all of that again. So for Continental, here I've worked to my turning point and I don't turn because I'm going to move backwards. I slip, I lift up that yarn, and I do have to move the yarn back between the two needle points, and then I'm ready to purl backwards. So let me go ahead and purl backwards until there's four stitches left. And remember, if this time you're moving backwards, the other turn is going to actually look the same as uh, when you're moving forward because we're, we're not turning around. So this one's gonna look really remarkably the same. One, two, three, four. Okay, so two more. So think of it this way. Remember, if you were moving normally forward, you'd be purling and you would stop and you would turn. So we're already there. We're already in that same position that we were after we turned. So that yarn has to come to the front first, then we slip, and then we lift up to move those legs up and over, and then we knit. So now I'm gonna knit across to four stitches before the last wrap, and then I'll go ahead and do this backwards for throwing. I'm not quite as fast backwards for throwing, but we'll take a look. So there's my double wrap, one, two, three, four, so one more stitch. Okay, so let's say I was throwing. Don't forget, if normally it would turn and my yarn is already in the front, I don't turn and my yarn's already in the back. So I don't have to do anything but stop and slip then I have to lift that yarn up, because remember, WNT, think turn and warp. So there I've warped this stitch. And I have to move the yarn back between the two tips of the needle. And I will purl back to four stitches before the last doubled stitch. And again, now it's gonna look normal moving forward. I do find that my tension on German short rows is really excellent when I'm doing it backwards. So there's my last doubled wrap. Oops, I went one stitch too far. And there we are, one, two, three, four. So again, think of it this way. Normally you turn and now I'm right back where I was. If I was purling, I'd turn to this point. Move the yarn between the two tips of the needle slip, lift those legs up and over, and I'm ready to knit forward. So now we'll take a look at hiding those wraps. 
by knitting the double stitches. They're not really wraps, they're doubled stitches. And of course, moving forward, it's no different. We just wanna look at it moving backwards. So there's that first doubled stitch for throwing, and I'll knit it together. And now let's go to Continental, always important to demo in both ways. And there's that doubled stitch, and we'll knit the stitch together with the double, knit to the end of the row. But the important part is to look at it backwards. And backwards, it's nothing more unusual than a purl two together. But just like moving forward, the only important thing is that you're making sure that your needle is really going into the stitch, not into the row below. So we'll take a look here, slow down, there it is. Now one nice thing is, as opposed to a wrap and turn, it's really hard to miss those doubled stitches, aren't they? Not impossible, never say impossible. So there it is, so let's do one for continental and one for throwing. So there's that doubled stitch. So again, if I put needle right close to needle and I move that stitch to the tip, I can make sure that I really enter the stitch. You'll notice there's nothing between me my needles and my needle. But if I go someplace else, if I accidentally go into the row below, or I go, you know, here, you can see, oh, there's something between those stitches, right? So you want to make sure that you're really and truly entering the stitch and the double. And then you're just, doink, purling two together. Take a look at that again for throwing. So there's that doubled stitch, and I want to enter the stitch, enter the double. There it is. You can see that stitch and work them together. So let's take a look at what it looks like. And again, the reason I love German short rows is um, it's a great method anytime you're working something where you see both the right and the wrong side, like a, a shawl or like in Costa Maya, a shawl collar. So there they are on the public side and they look really nice, very lovely. There they are. But on the wrong side row, they also look quite good. So there's no big giant loopy loops like that they are in a wrap and turn. So in the shawl collar where you see the right side and the wrong side, this looks quite nice.